In this question, we have a fixed gear that is rotating and it's pushing along a um, rack. Uh, we're given the mass of both the gear and the rack and uh, the radius of gyration of the gear and we're asked to find what is the moment um, that we input into the gear um, if um, we reach an omega of 20 radians per second in 0 0.6125 seconds. Uh, so this is a uh, momentum, impulse and momentum question. Um, so what we need to do first is we need to draw our free body diagram in order to determine um, the forces and the moments that we're applying to the system. Um, so we're going to start with the rack first. So I'll just draw the rack as a rectangle, but so I'm not going to ignore the teeth, um, but know that there are teeth on the rack. Um, and so on the rack, we have a uh, normal force up and we have a force that is pushing the rack uh, so in this case this whole system is rotating um, with an omega that is clockwise um, so if we look at uh, the point where these two where the rack and the gear meet um, the velocity will be along the negative x direction um, so this is going to be v um, and i'm going to draw my coordinate system so x being that way and y being up um, so if the velocity, those two points share the same velocity, um, so the velocity uh, will be backwards, so in the negative x direction. Um, so the force that we need to apply to the rack in order to start from rest and then move to that direction is going to be in the uh, negative x direction. And so this is going to be F, which is the force that we, um, that the gear and the rack um, transmit between each other. Um, and then we have um, the course of gravity, obviously, um, of the rack. And since there's no friction, we do not have a friction force. Okay, so this is for the rack. And then we have the gear. So the gear, again, I'll just draw it as a circle, but know that it does have teeth. Um, so the gear, again, it's going to have its um, force due to gravity, um, Fg, acts at the center. Um, it also has um, that same exact um, force um, that uh, we are applying um, because um, this force is um, equal and opposite between the rack and the gear. So this is, again, the same force, F. And then we also have a moment which we're applying and the moment that we apply is going to be in the direction of omega um, so omega will be in this direction so this is also the for the direction of the moment because we're accelerating everything in that direction so that's the direction we apply the moment in oh and sorry this force f should be in the opposite direction because it's equal and opposite to the force from the rack. So I'll put the F over here. Okay, um, and um, then we have our reaction force over here, um, GX and GY. And those are the reaction forces because this gear here is pinned at the center. Okay, um, now we're not interested in all of these forces. Um, we're just interested in um, a few. And that's why this is why we need our free body diagram to identify which forces uh, we need to take into account um, in the, um, with momentum. Okay, so first of all, we have to figure out what this velocity that I drew in green here is. Um, so remember the velocity um, V Sorry, let me write it in black. Uh, v is equal to um, omega cross r. Okay, so in this case, we have um, omega. Um, and omega, and so this, we're looking at the end. Okay, so at the beginning, the velocity is zero, so omega is zero, so everything is fixed. Um, at the end, so at the end point, after 0 0.6125 seconds, 
we have omega of 20 radians per second, and we're trying to find what is this velocity down here. So using the vector equation, we have our radius, or r, which starts from here and points down that way. This is r, um, and omega is going to be in the k hat direction because it's rotating um, in the xy plane. Um, and it's rotating clockwise, so it's going to be in the negative k direction uh, because we assumed a positive um, rotation to be counterclockwise. Okay, so if we plug everything in, we um, get uh, the following. Omega being 20 radians per second in the negative k hat direction, cross product to r, which is going to be negative um, 0 0.15 meters in the j hat direction and this will give us a velocity of uh, negative um, 3 meters per second in the um, i hat direction okay so um, this is going to be our velocity v, which I forgot to add the vector sign on top. Um, and just to make it clear, this here is r. Okay. So now that we have our velocity, um, we can actually do a momentum balance for both the rack and the gear. Um, so let's do it for the rack first. So let's write. momentum balance. So first we're going to do the rack. So for the rack, um, we're going to look at the two time points. So this is the general formula um, applied to this rack. We have the mass. This rack is not rotating. It's just translating. Um, so we don't have to take into account any omega. We only have to take into account linear velocity. So we have m of the rack times um, the velocity of the rack. Uh, at time point 1, uh, plus uh, the sum of the integral from t1 to t2 of f in dt uh, equals to mv rack of 2. So again, this term here is at the beginning, and this is at the end. Um, and this is actually to get from the beginning to the end. Um, but this is going to be equal to zero because the initial velocity of the rack is zero. And then we have a mass times the velocity of rack two, which is what we just found over here, the final velocity of the uh, rack. Um, and then there's this term here, which is the integral from t1 to t2 of forces in dt. Um, now, in this case, we're going to assume that all of the forces are constant. Um, and so we can actually take out this term from the integral because they do not depend on time. And then we just multiply it by the time interval um, because the integral from t1 to t2 of dt is just that time interval. Um, and so um, that makes it simple because the forces are going to be constant throughout the whole time. Um, and um, again, this here, there's no omega terms, no rotational velocity terms. And there's no uh, moment terms because um, there's no moment applied to the rack. It's just linearly translating. Okay, so we can actually plug things in here. Um, so this first term goes to zero um, because um, the mass of the rack. So this is zero meters per second. The velocity of the rack at time one is going to be zero, um, and the mass of the rack um, is uh, twenty kilograms. Uh, plus, um, there's only one force that we're interested in here. Um, so if we go back to our free body diagram, uh, the only one force that we're interested in is F um, because all of the other forces, um, yeah, they're, they equate each other, they cancel. So um, the only force that we're interested in is um, the force F. Um, and this force F is going to be equal to um, we can pull it out of the integral because we know it's constant, right? Um, and it doesn't depend on time. So this is just going to be equal to F because we call this force F here. Um, and uh, times uh, the time, the integral of, from T1 to T2 of dt, which is essentially the time interval. Okay, so times T, um, which is going to be equal to 
uh, the mass of the rack again, 20 kilograms times um, the velocity of rack 2, which we just found up here, was 3 meters per second. Okay, now we can actually plug in T because we're given T is 0 0.6125 and we can solve for F. So given that T is 0 0.6125 seconds, we solve for F and we get that F is equal to um, 60 newtons. Okay, so that force there is going to be equal to 60 newtons. Now let's go and do the same thing for the gear. Okay, so for the gear here, you can see that we're going to have this force F and this moment M. So we're going to, the same equation holds, it's just we don't have linear velocities anymore, we have angular velocities, um, and we have a moment here. Okay, um, and this moment um, is going to be created by both um, the moment that we're applying, but also this force here. Okay, so we also have to keep into account that force. And um, that's two unknowns, but we've already solved for this force, so it actually gives us one unknown, the moment. Okay, so let's do the same thing. So we have, instead of mv, we have ig omega. So we have ig uh, omega 1 plus uh, the sum of the integral from time 1 to time 2 of the moment in about g in dt, uh, which is equal to i g omega 2. Okay, so again, just like before, this term here is 0 because everything starts from rest, it's not rotating. Um, so we have i g, um, which we can get from the radius of gyration. So we have a radius of gyration um, of 125 millimeters. Um, so we can actually solve for um, uh, for um, ig with m kg squared, um, and um, then multiplied by omega, which is zero radians per second. Um, and then here we're going to have m, which is um, 30 kilograms. Um, and then kg is 0 0.125 meters squared, okay? So this, let me just write it out neatly, this here is ig, um, because this is m times the radius of gyration squared, and remember this radius of gyration we're given in millimeters, but we have to make it into meters to get standard units. And then this gives us zero, so that term all cancels. Um, plus, um, again, that moment that uh, we're applying here in the clockwise direction um, is going to be positive, but this moment um, is going to be constant throughout time. So we can pull it out of that integral and say m um, times the time interval. Okay. Then we also have another moment that is created by this force down here. And this force down here is moving everything in the counterclockwise direction. Um, so that's um, going to be opposite. Okay, so it's going to have an opposite sign of this. It's going to be in the opposite direction. Um, and um, this moment here is going to be the force times this radius here, which is the radius of that gear, that circle. So that's going to be equal to... Uh, minus f times r, uh, again, times the integral, because we're assuming that f is constant throughout time, radius is constant throughout time. We can pull that out of the integral, um, and we can um, times it by the time. And this is going to be equal to ig omega 2, which is, again, the same ig, 30 kilograms times 0 0.125 meters squared times omega 2, which we're given is 20 radians per second. Okay, now here we can plug in f, we can plug in r because we're given, and we can also plug in t because we're given all of this. Um, and so you get the following. Um, m is going to be equal to um, 30 kilograms times 0 0.125 meters squared times 20 radians per second uh, plus f which is 60 
newtons times r, which is um, 0 0.15 meters, times t, which is 0 0.6125 seconds, um, divided by t, which is 0 0.6125 seconds. And we get that m is equal to 30 newton meters. And that is our final answer.